Hi, I'm Keith Raymond, Harvesting and Logistics Program Manager at Forest Growers Research. This presentation showcases some new technology innovation for New Zealand harvesting operations. This is the first successful project to come out of the Primary Growth Partnership in Forestry, Automation and Robotics, which is managed by Forest Growers Research and co-funded by the Ministry for Primary Industries, the Forest Growers Levy Trust, forestry companies and manufacturing partners in New Zealand. The automation and robotics program is based on a proposed new harvest process on the landing and new automated log sorting facilities off landing. The vision for the automated forestry value chain is no boots on the ground, no hands on the log. One of the first projects off the blocks was to develop a semi-autonomous hauler control system and smart yarder grapple as seen on the bottom right of this concept diagram. We collaborated with Rosewarn and May Limited, an engineering company based in Whangarei, as our manufacturing partner in this project. As we all know, grapple yarding using hydraulic grapple carriages is highly productive, and it's a lot safer to operate than using manual breaker outs. So one of the program's objectives is to increase the use of grapples. This objective aligned closely with Rosewarn and May's goals in developing a semi-automated hauler and grapple carriage. So a little bit of background about Rosewarn and May. They are the design and manufacturing division of the Rosewarn group of companies that's based up in the Northland region. They developed the ROB or remote operated bulldozer winch assist system back in about 2014. The directors are Ian May, the engineering side of the business, and Lars Rosewarn, a well-known character in the New Zealand logging industry. The other company that's involved is Rosewarn Cable Loggers, which is a large harvesting contractor in Northland, contracting to Hancock Forest Management and Rayonia Matariki Forests. So what was the project about? From Rosewarn and May's perspective, the drivers were really to resolve a lot of the issues that are associated with existing hydraulic grapple carriages and to deliver efficiencies for their tower yarder operations. To achieve wider uptake of grapple carriages, to increase the utilization of those existing systems, to improve health and safety, removing manual breaker outs from the risk. And from an automation point of view, one of the drivers was really to try and reduce the workload on hauler operators so that they have a bit more job satisfaction. So the objectives were to design, manufacture and commercialise a semi-automated tower yarder with an integrated grapple carriage. The Thunderbird TTY-70 tracked tower hauler was the base machine for the prototype. And it was designed to have features such as hydraulic skyline control, controlling the skyline tension and ground clearance, and reducing wear on the skyline. Sensors for collision avoidance during normal operating conditions a new type of grapple to use a swinging arm rather than direct connection of the grapple to the carriage to reduce shock loading, and a new hauler cab for improved operator comfort. The system also enabled retrofitting the automation to other yarders with no opportunity cost of lost production during the refit through using this first prototype as a swap machine for the next client while their machine was being retrofitted. As the concept design was already undertaken by Rosewarn and May, the IP sits with them. Large elements of the ROB technology were used in terms of the winch control and radio remote control. Field testing would be undertaken locally with Rosewarn cable loggers, and manufacturing meets ISO standards. So looking at the grapple design, there's a number of key features. Rosewarn and May wanted it to be a simpler design with a swinging arm to reduce damage to the carriage. They wanted to use off-the-shelf components as much as possible, and they wanted it to be light but strong enough to handle the robust nature of the work. So looking at the development of the project, in September 2018, Rosewarn and May put together a proposal to forestry companies Hancock Forest Management and Rainier Matariki Forests. The forestry companies saw an opportunity for an industry-wide project involving forest growers research with funding available from both the forest growers levy and MPI. 
The first project meeting was held in November 2018, and investment was agreed between the co-investors in the project. The design commenced in January, and the second-hand base machine was purchased in September 2019. It was originally planned that the construction would take about 12 months, but COVID-19 shut down in 2020, and the effect on international supply chains in terms of delivery of hydraulic components from overseas has delayed progress. The project funding. The contribution of the partners is roughly 20% each, for Rosewater May as in-kind contribution. The two forestry companies together and FGR making up the industry funding of 60%. The balance of the project budget, 40%, is MPI cash. The total budget was 1.3 million that comprised design and build of the alpha prototype for 1.125 million. And in year two, there was a budget for an additional 179,000 for field trials, industry demo, and commercialization. The total cost of the build ended up at over 1.5 million, the additional expenditure being funded as in-kind contribution from Rose Warner May. Looking at the work plan, there were three development stages. Stage one was preliminary work made up of purchase of the hauler components and spare parts, engineering design drawings of the grapple carriage, and stripping down and refurbishing the hauler. The second stage involved building the hauler cab and the fabrication of the grapple, installing air, electronics, and new winch gear. Stage three involves setup and field testing, which is the stage that we're at now. Firstly, the hauler was stripped down to the tracks, motor, and transmission. Hydraulics, pneumatics, and winches were taken out, and the main and tail winches were refurbished. The most work that was done was to change the skyline winch, which was the key part of the whole project, pulling the skyline drum out, chopping the original shaft, milling spline hubs on each end of the shaft, and fitting two new hydraulic skyline motors. Then the hydraulics were replaced with new hydraulic controls for the valves and a new air control system was fitted. For the hauler cab, they basically built a new cab altogether, and then a new electrical system was fitted, which was totally different. They installed a CAN bus system, which is common technology nowadays in industrial automation. The CAN bus or controller area network protocol is a communication system designed to allow microcomputers and devices to control different functions and communicate with each other without a host computer or complex wiring. One module controls all the engine management. One module controls all the hydraulics, one controls all the sensors, and one controls all the air system. Each of these computers is communicating to each other all the time, and it's all done through only two wires communicating between the whole lot. Stage three, the field testing. This commenced in December of 2020 at Rosewarn Cable Loggers. Trialling the hauler in a difficult setting in Pipiwai Forest, Whangarei, extracting stems over 500 metres away. So what were some of the learnings from the first trial? Firstly, the Skyline drum had plenty of power. That was important. But the Skyline drum speed appeared slow, so Rosewater May decided a change in gear ratios was required. There was very little line wrap between the Skyline and the main line, which was originally foreseen to be a problem. And the hydraulic cooling, oil cooling, was not sufficient in their view. And some modification to the cooling system was required. From an operator perspective, the tension monitoring system displayed in the operator cab was working well. Excellent visual alerts, with the screen being able to be push, switched at the push of a button. The AgCam camera was working well, with a clear image and very little interference. And even though the operator had only been working the machine for two days when these trials were done, he was coming up to speed quickly. 
and he was impressed with the reduced workload due to the automation of the skyline on inhaul. Looking at the grapple carriage, the original grapple tines seen on the top photograph were too large and appeared to be slow to open and close, so they will be modified. The power to the grapple arms and rotator function goes through the shaft of the hanging bracket so there are no loose hoses to snag when the carriage is operated. Another factor on the grapple carriage was the installation of a sensor for collision avoidance. They found this was mounted too high on the carriage and this will be relocated. The hydraulics in the carriage were also modified with a new valve bank installed. The major feature of the grapple and hauler control system is the semi-automated hydraulic skyline control, raising and lowering the skyline automatically to maximise deflection during in-haul and tracking the terrain. This is shown in this brief video clip of the in-haul. Here you can see the skyline drum is initially winding in, then it stops and starts to wind out to lower the skyline, maximising the deflection. This is all done without the operator's control. The tension is maintained within safe working load of the skyline at all times. An in-haul on the main line, an out-haul via shotgunning or gravity return, is controlled directly by the operator. So an update on the development since the initial trials. Rosewarn and May have further developed the software for hauler control. They've modified the hydraulics in the grapple carriage, changed the claws on the grapple, but these will be further modified. The Skyline Control and Tension Monitoring System is working well, and Rosewarn and May hosted a field demonstration to project co-investors back in April of 2021. The skyline drum ratios have not been changed yet. Looking at the next steps in the project. The next steps are to complete all planned modifications. These are expected to be completed later in 2021. Organise an industry-wide field demonstration once those modifications are complete. Integrate machine vision for stem recognition for the grapple carriage on outhaul is the next big step of the project. This is a view of machine vision of a stand of trees taken from a carriage as it uh, moves back on outhaul in a uh, European operation. FGR completed an RFP process for stem recognition for the grapple carriage in December of 2020, and this work is due to commence this quarter. In the future, or implementing automatic lowering of the skyline and positioning of the grapple is foreseen. Automatic stop at the landing edge, lowering of the skyline and landing of the load, and automatic carriage return back to the breakout site. FGR also intends to conduct full production trials in 2022. So in conclusion, this project has been a collaboration between Forest Growers Research using the Forest Growers Commodity Levy Funds, Ministry for Primary Industries through the Primary Growth Partnership Fund, the Forestry Company Stakeholders, Hancock Forest Management New Zealand Limited and Rainier Matariki Forests, and Rosewarn and May Limited, the manufacturing partner. Thank you.